Welcome back. Bombay Shaving Company is a rare example of a young D2C brand that has broken into the tough personal care category dominated by large FMCG players. The company's founder and CEO Shantanu Deshpande is a seasoned entrepreneur, FMCG professional and a part of growing cult of celebrity startup founders in India. In a candid conversation with Delshad Irani, Shantanu highlights the brand's performance category and offline expansion plans and how the homegrown brand is disrupting everything from how India grooms to how brands are built in a digital world. Hello and welcome to Storyboard 18, Chantanu. It's great to have you on the show. My pleasure, Dilshad. My pleasure. So let me just kick off with asking you, how was uh, 2022, you know, the financial year for uh, the Bombay Sharing Company? We have grown 75%. Our profitability is up by 20%. Um, we, uh, our team has expanded, our channels have uh, gone up significantly. Uh, strategically, we are now reaching consumers through, uh, for example, uh, in offline, we have now uh, uh, penetrated into DMART and Reliance in a large way. We have penetrated into army canteens in a large way. These are kind of more, you know, uh, high gestation, but very, very effective channels. Even instant grocery, the category itself took off a lot. So we are very, very ripe for that kind of stuff. So across online, offline, we did well. Uh, hair removal and hygiene and personal care are the categories we operate in. Uh, for men and women, they've done well. So overall, um, very, very good. We are closing the year at roughly 190 crores in net revenue and a run rate of almost 260 crores in net revenue. So you've, you've pretty much established yourself as a really sort of aggressive, young, homegrown brand, especially in the men's grooming space. And you then launched Bombay, of course, for women. Now, just your experience, uh, how different was it to sort of uh, innovate and create products and the brand in the men's category versus the women's category? And what are some of the insights, again, on that side that were informing your uh, both brand and business strategies? I think three, four things, right? Number one, men are hard to engage, easy to please. Okay, so it's very hard to get attention. It's very hard to change the way they do a certain thing. If they've gotten loyal to a brand, they don't want to switch it. They don't think about it much. They don't talk about it much. But once you enter the bathroom and you give them a great experience, they will be loyal. Like then they will stick to you. So it's a matter of time. Uh, and you know, but women on the other hand are easy to engage, hard to please. So you'll easily get attention. You women will talk about it a lot more. They're a lot more social about their personal care products or beauty products. But, you know, the bar on the product has to be a lot higher. Like there's a lot more competition and the consumer is a lot more evolved in their understanding of the category. <clears throat> Second thing is, I think in the men's space, there are few very well-established incumbents, right? Uh, you have Gillette, Philips. Those guys are like extraordinarily successful companies. People we look up to a lot. In women, we are moving consumers from services into products. So women for hair removal have typically gone to a salon or to a waxing saloon uh, and, and, and had a per preferred stylist give them a waxing experience. We're trying to move women from that to like do it yourself in the bathroom where they're using a product for the first time. They're using at-home waxing strips or a trimmer on their eyebrows for the first time, right? Uh, so again, different. Third is we're taking hair removal from a functional category to a beauty category. So if you see the way Bombay is... Is, is communicates its proposition. The product is beautiful. It's got hues of boldness and sassiness, but you know, it's about more beauty. So it's a very different ball game. I think the one thing that we have done is uh, I realized personally that I don't understand the category and the consumer at all. And it's important to have a, an all women consumer first team, uh, which uses the foundational elements of Bombay Shaving Company, which is our product insights, our sales teams, our channel team, et cetera. But the category, the brand, the consumer facing team is, is completely independent. It's headed by Siddha, who is who joined us from Bain and Company to be the CEO of that business. And they have their it's 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 an engine and a life of its own. This cult of celebrity uh, founders, you know. Uh, do you at any point in time see that as some sort of hindrance? And let me ask you frankly, because you've been, of course, in the eye of a couple of social media storms. And even in fact, your response to that got a lot of criticism when you decided to take a bit of a higher test and then you came back to LinkedIn, for example. Um, do you see that in some way sort of backfiring sometimes, the sort of the fame that certain founders have and, you know, the influence they exercise? You, you guys are, you know, super influencers in your own right. 
Um, so how do you see that? How do you see that sort of when, especially when it backfires sometimes perhaps? No, I agree. I think the 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 LinkedIn episode around the eighteen hour workday was 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 a very eye opening one. You suddenly realize that your words carry weight, and sometimes um, people who know you directly, right? People who follow you on social media, they will give you, they will know you because they followed you for a long time, and they will kind of get where you're coming from. But a uh, moment your circle of influence goes beyond significantly, people don't have you don't have the luxury of kind of giving context to people. So a lot of things are taken out of context. Uh, having said that, uh, my belief is for found like I think especially in consumer brands, um, it is important for the founders and the management teams and for the companies to kind of come out there and tell their stories, right? Whatever they're giving consumers because consumers are very smart and consumers want to know where their product is coming from. They're not going to get they're not going to get guided by ad advertising beyond a point. They want to know, right? So if the founder is able to or the CEO or the management team or the head of product, whatever is able to come out there and talk about, hey, you know, here's how we make our products for you. Here's what, why, why we value what we do. Here's who we are. Uh, and you'll see consumers relate to your brand a lot more because they relate to the people behind the brand. So that, I think, is important for consumer brand founders to do. And I, I invest in a lot of them. And a lot of, I think, Indian middle class value system kind of tells you to kind of work behind the curtains and don't look for attention. It, it's frowned upon. But I think in today's day and age, you'll be doing yourself a disservice if you're not putting yourself out there. It's very easy to do it. Um, the, but the responsibility is on you. You can't, number one is you can't get infamous or you can't get reputation because of because of negativity, right? Doing something wrong or being rebellious for the race sake or doing some fraud in your company and, st and getting into the media. That's That kind of stuff just, just, just sticks the wrong way, right? Because eventually, you know, it's called the Rakhi Samantha, right? Beyond a point, you, 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 people will kind of call you out. Uh, but if you're authentic, and even if you're if you're if you're someone who has a strong point of view which people will disagree with, as long as you're consistent, authentic, and can back it up, uh, founders, I think it's great for founders to be out there and talk about about their businesses and brands. I think so once in a while you'll get into a storm. It's fine. I think eventually uh, public memory is uh, is fickle. Public love is permanent. It was lovely chatting with you, Shantanu. I mean, lots to take away from our conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Parash Sharma, Director of Content and Community Partnerships at Meta, who's sharing insights on the creator economy and latest content trends on Instagram.